Hey everyone, welcome back to another The Problem With video. And today we're gonna to continue our look at the Bat Family and my opinions, once again, my opinions on what the issues are with the Bat Family members. Today's subject of our discourse is going to be Tim Drake. And since I know a lot of you are gonna to jump to conclusions or go leave comments down below before I even talk about anything, the issue's redundancy, okay? That's the actual issue with Tim Drake in my opinion. Redundancy, and we're gonna explain that in a second. Now today's episode is actually brought to you by Mongastorian. I brought it to you by me. I'm paying myself a dollar. That's, that's how this works. I, I gotta pay myself a dollar. Yep. So anyway, if you like this kind of video but you wanna see me doing it with your favorite manga series or One Piece or Chainsaw Man or Dragon Ball Super, go check out Mongastorian. The link will be down below. Or if you wanna hear gaming lore videos, we've also relaunched Eligible Monster, which is where I started my YouTube journey, doing gaming lore over there. We've got two Assassin's Creed comic books, we're working on the Sonic comic book, and we got a few other things coming out, including just generalized lore of video games. So check out both those channels, Manga Story and Eligible Monster, both down below. But let's get into the problem with Tim Drake. Now, in order to start this video, as usual, we gotta go over the history of the characters. Except there's a slight problem with Tim Drake. He's the one I never cared about. Now, I don't mean that in a like, oh, I hate Tim Drake kind of a way. Tim Drake was originally invented in 1989 and he was the Robin until 2009. He then became Red Robin until 2011 and that's the New 52. Now, the reason I didn't follow much of Tim Drake during this period is because this is in my younger years. At this period, I was buying Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2099 and the mainline Batman book. So I always knew who Tim Drake was, but I never followed his solo run. As a matter of fact, my brother was was more interested in the Robin run than I was. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview as to what was going on with Tim Drake at this period, but I really got more invested with Tim Drake, a la Damian Wayne period, up to New 52, which is when I really started to follow Tim Drake. So the original origin for Tim Drake is the most popular one and the one that we do see come up quite a bit. Dick Grayson was originally Robin and he was fired slash decided to go become Nightwing basically. There's a whole thing involved. I think it was in the Jericho contract or one of those. Either way, Dick Grayson was out. We got Jason Todd. Jason Todd was blown up. So Batman was becoming more violent and volatile because he had no Robin. This was noticed by Tim Drake who noticed a particular move used by Dick Grayson in Haley's Circus that was being used by Robin. He approached Dick Grayson, revealing that he knows that he is Robin, or was Robin, and that he knows what is going on with Batman, and by using his own detective knowledge, he knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman and Dick Grayson is Robin. He then tries to convince Dick Grayson to go back as Robin, declaring that Batman needs a Robin. But Dick Grayson had his own issues with Batman still at this point, and Batman was still reeling from the loss of Jason Todd. So eventually, Tim Drake basically unofficially tries out to become Robin. Now, one of the key things about Tim Drake early on was that it was noticed at age nine how intelligent he was, and he figured out who Batman and Robin were at age 13. Eventually, Batman is convinced by Alfred to take Tim Drake in. At age 14, Tim Drake is officially Robin. That was in 1989-ish. He then was Robin for a very long time, and he was the first Robin to get a solo Robin comic book. One of the core features of the Robin comic book was that it was more about relationships in his personal life, which is why people care so much about him with Stephanie Brown, because that was a core component of his book. They wanted a book that would compete with what was going on in Spider-Man. Spider-Man was more of a down-to-earth storyline in which he was trying to date Mary Jane, and he was trying to juggle real life with his superhero life. This was something that DC didn't really have at that time, and Robin was kind of one of the books to fill that gap. So a lot of people got attached to Tim Drake, they got attached to his life with Stephanie. They got attached to his relationship with his parents, his dad eventually being killed, which eventually leads to him wanting to get vengeance on the guy who killed him, which was Captain Boomerang. He pops up periodically during things like Nightfall, which is where I know him from because I read a lot of the Batman books at that time, but I just wasn't reading the spinoff books. Tim Drake was Robin, but the thing is with Batman, they don't always write a story that involves Robin. So when we needed a Robin, it was Tim Drake. But majority of the time, we just had Batman doing Batman things. There's also the period with Tim Drake when his dad died that Stephanie Brown took over as Robin. And then she died. I mean, it's comic books. I'm pretty sure Tim's dad stayed dead until 2011. But everyone else comes back to life. That's standard stuff in there. As a matter of fact, Captain Boomerang dies at one point, And then he gets brought back to life in Brightest Day, which leads to Tim chasing him down. Tim goes through quite a bunch of stuff. 
w- involving his dad, his mom. He goes through stuff with Stephanie. He's basically bouncing back and forth. It's a crazy book that a lot of people enjoy. It went for 20 years. In 2009, that's when they decided to start transitioning Damien into the role of Robin. And this is where the redundancies came in. So Tim Drake was moved over to the role of Red Robin. The reasoning at the time was that Dick Grayson was Batman, and he felt that Tim was his equal, not his sidekick. So he fired Tim Drake from being Robin and gave the title to Damien so that Tim could go off on his own, become his own Nightwing, become his own Red Hood. He became Red Robin. The Red Robin run involves the League of Assassins, a whole thing involving Ra's al Ghul. He eventually ties himself into Azrael. They do a whole thing with... The writers were doing both books, so they have a thing with like the fall of Gotham or something. Like I said, I wasn't too intensely reading this stuff at this time. But it comes down to Red Robin, Azrael, Ra's al Ghul having a whole big three-way. I know how I worded that. And then eventually that resolves because New 52 happened. And this is when the redundancy started to really pop its head up. New 52 was great for some characters and problematic for other characters. Tim Drake being one of the most abused characters in the New 52. You can also throw Wally West into this plot. It felt like Dan DiDio took Tim Drake and, and Wally West, threw him into a blender, blended them all up, and then was like, ah, I think I got a little Tim left. Let's make a little Tim thing. Yeah, there we go. What they decided to do is cram all the years that Batman was Batman into five years. They also then didn't tell us what was still in continuity. Was Nightfall in continuity? Was the whole Damien situation in continuity? Did Tim's dad die? All of these things we didn't know. And they also, I love how it was worded in uh, one of the wikis I read to get caught up on all of this. It was smoothed over. They smoothed over his origin. He no longer had anything to do with Dick Grayson. He was barely a part of the Batman situation. He basically got really close to figuring out who Batman was, but he didn't figure out who Batman was. So Tim's plan is to force Batman to find him. Instead of figuring out who Batman was, he hacks into the Penguin's computer, steals money from the Penguin, gives it to his family so that Batman has to save his family. The stupidest thing you could ever do to one of the smartest characters in the DC Universe. Tim's parents are then forced into witness protection because Tim stole from the Penguin. And Tim's dad is like, well... My son can't go into witness protection with me. What if that billionaire Bruce Wayne adopted my child? That's what happens. Although I don't think his dad has a British weird accent because my accent wasn't really British, but you know what I'm saying. Tim is then adopted into the Wayne family. His name is changed to Tim Drake, and he immediately takes the title of Red Robin. Why would he not be Robin in this new origin? Because we had a Robin. In the revamped origins of the New 52, Damian Wayne was officially Robin to Bruce Wayne. Like, they moved him from Dick Grayson to Bruce Wayne. So you can't have two Robins. I mean, a tale of two Robins. Damien and Tim going on adventures together. Would have been awesome, but didn't happen. Red Robin was then automatically shuffled off. He wasn't on the Bat family. He was barely involved in it. At this time, he had more of a Jason Todd role, where he just kind of showed up when things were convenient. So what happened is Tim Drake went over to the New 52 Teen Titans team which also got a lot of shit. So the Teen Titans team at this time involved a couple of key characters. We had Tim Drake, Superboy, Kid Flash, Bart Allen. Now, I'm going to talk about him in a minute because he is a whole can of worms himself that they couldn't figure out, okay? but So we got rid of Wally, brought in Impulse, basically, but called him Kid Flash. Tim Drake was only Red Robin with a brand new costume. I don't remember the deal with Superboy at this time, but I'm pretty sure this one turned into Con L, which was a different clone of Superman and Super and Lex Luthor, and I don't know. It wasn't the Connor everyone knows. It wasn't that one. I think the only character that carried over properly ish was Donna. But that might not have been right, because while I didn't read much Robin pre-New 52, I definitely didn't read anything involving Donna Troy. And in all honesty, from the look of the cover, I can't remember if that's actually Donna Troy or if it's Cassie. It doesn't even matter, because nothing happened with them. So, whatever. Because Donna herself comes back later, like actual Donna. But that could have been Rebirth Hoopla. I'm not 100% sure. The only ones that were important for this Teen Titans story were Red Robin, Superboy, and, and Bart Allen. So anyway... Red Robin's over here. They, they cross over for Death of the Family. They cross over for a couple of other things. But generally, Tim just doesn't show up in the Batman books because at this time, Scott Snyder was writing Batman and he ignored all Robins. Like, they never showed up. 
he made his own towards the back half out of Duke. So he didn't even care about the Robins. And alongside that, we had a Batman and Robin storyline that was featuring Damien, which was the conclusion to Batman Inc., which was the death of Damien. So Tim was just out. He just wasn't a part of the Bat family majority of the time. He was a part of the Teen Titans, and the Teen Titans were fighting against a group known as Harvest. Now, the Harvest was a group that was kidnapping kids that had powers to do experiments on them. So what happened is the Teen Titans and the League of Superheroes were having constant crossovers involved in events called the Culling and stuff like that, in which they would battle against Harvest, who was a terrible villain. I forget who he really was, but he looked like a monster and he was just trying to do experiments on the kids. I think he might have been from the future. I don't know. Here's the kicker. When reading over the wiki to get refreshed on these notes and what's going on, I remember this. Scott Liddell pretty much got fired because the story didn't go anywhere. Harvest would show up and be like, I've kidnapped the children. Are you going to stop me, Red Robin? And he's like, another time. I have a crossover to go do. Zoom. And like, they just didn't do anything with it. I was sitting here thinking to myself, because the way I do these videos is I try to remember as much of it as I can myself. And then I fill in the gaps of the wiki. And one of the things that I couldn't remember is what happened to the original New 52 Teen Titans storyline, because I remember enjoying it. I have the trades for it upstairs. But I'm like, what? How did that resolve? It's not even noted. It's not even noted in the wiki how it resolves, and I don't remember. So it can't have been good. In all honesty, I'm kind of wondering if it did resolve. Because the wiki just jumps to Raven and Trigon showing up eventually, which I remember the Raven outfit being really stupid. She's like, I got a mouth, and I got feathers. And I got feathers. And I got feathers for days. Like, guys, her name's Raven. It's a name. It's not a literal thing. She's not a literal Raven. Apparently, Raven and Trigon were pushed out because Scott Liddell didn't want to do them in the storyline. He wanted to tell his Harvest storyline. But then he started getting flack because the Harvest storyline wasn't going anywhere. So then he brought back in Raven and Trigon. And I remember falling off of the Teen Titans book at Raven and Trigon. And I have a feeling it's because Harvest was going nowhere. And I was kind of invested in that storyline at this point. And overall, the whole point of this is what I'm telling you is, did I say Tim Drake once? No, because he barely mattered. Anyway, Tim Drake ends up kind of being a part of this. He's leading the team. He's doing his own stuff. But for the most part, he's just there. They're not doing anything with him because no one knows what to do with Tim. Tim is supposed to be Robin. But how do you have Robin when we have Robin and Damien? So after all of the backlash from all these Teen Titans run, eventually Scott Liddell was, had left. They rebooted it. I remember the cover to this issue. It was Beast Boy with like a photo. And they were trying a new angle in which the Teen Titans were going to be like pseudo social influencers was the idea, which I think is a plot that also pops up in young justice. But basically the idea is like, well, beast boy's famous on social media. So he's getting caught everywhere. And then I think the first villain involved beast boy, like there's a social media app that's hacking into people's brains, which is actually, now that I think about it, a storyline that pops up a lot. Like a lot of storylines have social media hacks our brains. Are they trying to tell us something? Anyway, in the revamped version of Teen Titans, I don't remember if Tim Drake was even on it, the social media influencer era, because this was towards the end of New 52, and Dan's eyes are going to light up when I remind him that this existed, because no one remembers that this existed, okay? Because Dan's watching me. He's the, he's the producer who catches me on, like, stupid things. Future's End is where Tim Drake went. Future's End was Terry McGinnis coming back in time to correct Brother I and Omac from having problems in the future. And I fell off midway and came back midway, but I forget how. Somehow, Tim is involved, goes to the future, Tim Drake becomes Batman Beyond. I'm not, you, you would think I'm telling you a joke. Tim Drake becomes Batman Beyond in the future because they had no idea what to do with Tim Drake. Okay, which is why I'm pretty sure he wasn't in the Teen Titans run at the time, because I think he got flung into the future because Future's End was supposed to be in continuity. At this point, for five years, 2011 to 2016, they have had no idea what they're doing with Tim Drake. He's now Red Robin. He's leading the Teen Titans. He's not leading the Teen Titans. He's over with the Bat Family. He's not over with the Bat Family. He's Batman Beyond because we have nothing else to do with him. We don't know what to do with Tim Drake, okay? And this is kind of what I was saying with Jason, but the problem with Tim versus Jason, because the, Jason, I said, they also don't know what to do with. But Jason is Red Hood. Jason is an anti-hero with guns who insists that Batman should kill the villains versus actually, like, putting them in Arkham. There's still a character template that existed for Red Hood in New 52. 
And they would take that template and they would move him into mystical, into space, onto eight different teams. But Tim, Tim's identity was, I am Robin. I have a girlfriend with Stephanie Brown. And uh, those are my two big character traits. Oh, and I'm smarter than Batman. But the New 52 broke up him and Stephanie. It got rid of his Robin era, automatically making him Red Robin. And they clearly stated at the beginning he's not as smart as he was because he didn't figure out Batman's identity. So for five years, Tim was in a weird flux that's worse than Jason because he was a redundancy. Tim was Robin. Now he's Red Robin. But how does that differ from Robin? Because Damien was getting all of the Robin roles. He was in the... T that's it. That's, a, that's what happened. Tim was kicked off the Team Titans and Damien was put on the Team Titans. We still had a Robin, but it wasn't Tim, which proves my point that Tim is a redundancy. That, that DC themselves were like, oh man, we got, we got the real Robin. We got Damien, put him on the team. And that's when Tim was flung into the future to become Batman Beyond. We then jumped to DC Rebirth, okay? DC Rebirth revamped everything. Tim was back in the proper timeline. He was no longer Batman Beyond. They put back in Terry in the role for Batman Beyond. I think they might have kept that in canon, but I think what happened is Tim went to the future, altered something, flung it back in time, put Terry back in the spot. So it's like, it's in canon, but we can also just throw it out the window and never worry about it existing again. Tim was also at this point officially off of the Teen Titans because this is when Damien built that other team that he had where he was mean to them. What they did with Tim was Tim was pretty much the lead of Detective Comics. And this was finally a role for Tim. They kicked this one off by throwing out the name Red Robin. They basically redid his origin, which applies now that he was Robin for a period, did not immediately go to Red Robin. And Batman even says that he doesn't mind the name Red Robin, but he's always thought of Tim as Robin. And this is going to be fun because I just gave Dan a very difficult panel to find. And so they were fixing Tim. They also established that he's smarter than Batman. And so they put him in charge of a team. Now this team featured Batwoman, Orphan, Spoiler, and Clayface. And this is one of my favorite runs involving Tim. Like I said, I started really getting more into Tim at the Teen Titans New 52 era. That storyline went nowhere. Tim disappeared. I got really into him in the DC Rebirth era. Really into Tim. Yeah. Anyway, so basically they built this team to find a group known as the Colonists. The Colonists were led by Jacob Kane. It was a military group that was trying to figure out Batman secrets to use them against him and create like an army of Batman. It was a really amazing book. We have it on the channel. I also recommend adding it to your collection. It does a great thing giving Orphan and Spoiler some like background, some character. Uh, Tim starts dating Spoiler again. We start to get that kind of rolling again, but it's a rocky relationship, which is what you would expect from a Tim Drake relationship. We get Clayface in there being redeemed as a hero, and this is probably one of the best portrayals of Clayface we've ever had. And Tim is just awesome. They also bring in Azriel eventually and stuff like that. Eventually, it comes down to them figuring out who's in charge. It's Jacob Kane, and then Jacob Kane sends the drones to, for one final stand to kill Tim. And Tim defeats the entire wave of drones only to discover that there's a second wave of drones, and those waves bombard him unbelievably to the point where he is dead. He's officially killed. Not really. It's a comic book. So what they did is they teleported Tim out at the last second so that he couldn't die. It was the character Mr. Oz, who we discovered later is Jor-El, Superman's father, who was trying to manipulate things to try and fix the timeline, but then that storyline was thrown out and Jor-El was kind of floating, free-floating, and then he kind of manipulated John. Jor-El's a whole nother can of worms we're not going to get into. Let me just state this. Jor-El kidnapped Tim to make him relive his own past, and they never, as far as I remember, even established why. He just did it. Tim is thought to be dead at this time, but the rest of us know that he's really alive, but they barely touch on that plot. Tim's just off the table. Again, eventually he's discovered that Tim is in this prison being held by Jor-El, a future version of Tim using OMAC tech in a Batman suit, eventually teams up with Tim and the two of them break out. We discover that future Tim became Batman because he had to get rid of Damien and Dick and Jason failed at the job and that future Tim being Batman is the worst thing he ever wanted, so he's kind of evil, okay? So evil future Tim ends up like influencing younger Tim and then evil future Tim wants to kill Batwoman because he says that Batwoman is what made him into Batman and it's its own thing and it's kind of dumb because you're basically stating that Tim after everything just becomes an evil Batman and you're like oh cool this is like a one-off this 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 is just a one-off idea we'll never get to this again it'll never happen Super Sons of Tomorrow happens later we'll talk about that in a minute so anyway we discover Tim's back Tim rejoins the Bat family stops his own evil self in the future the storyline in general I remember being a 
enjoyable, but if you try to overthink evil Tim, you're kind of like, uh, I don't know about that. Anyway, Tim himself then goes on a multiversal adventure written by Brian Michael Bendis known as Young Justice. While this is happening, just so I can end the evil, evil Tim loop, there's another evil Tim. Because apparently when he goes to the future, he has to become evil. In this evil version, he comes back in time to kill John Kent because John Kent's going to blow up the entire world. So apparently every future involving Tim Drake, uh, the superheroes kill everyone and he needs to go back in time and stop it. I, I don't know why. But anyway, let's get back to Tim himself. Tim himself goes on a multiversal adventure. It's decided that Tim and the new team are going to investigate alternate realities. And I'm pretty sure either they, he breaks up with Stephanie at this time or it happened off panel. Or they're just like, oh, you go to college and I'll go over here and we'll never talk again. The Stephanie thing's just on hold while he explores the multiverse. Going through the multiverse, he also discovers the original Connor. They save Superboy. Superboy has been on Gem World where he's got a wife and a kid. And I'm pretty sure the kid's not his, but I 100%... I read this story and I barely remember Young Justice. And I looked up a ton of information to cover in this video and I did not give two sh about rereading what happened in Young Justice. <laughs> this storyline's got Ginny Hex, Teen Lantern. These are characters you are never going to see again, ever. Anyway, Superboy either abandons the child that is his or it's not his child and joins them on the multiversal adventures. They eventually come to Earth 3 where he meets his evil counterpart known as Drake and he decides that that's a great name. I'm going to call myself Drake and no longer am I Robin or Red Robin. I am Drake. And he puts on a poop brown outfit. And then everyone's like, Dude, that's your name. How are people not going to figure out your name is Dr I get you're a bird. You're like at least Robin was like a killer bird. Now you're just a mallard. You're just a duck. You're going to like quack. Anyway, that doesn't last long. He eventually just comes back to being Robin and he comes back and he changes his Robin outfit. At this point though, we then run into the thing that a lot of people are going to leave comments about. Okay? We go into Urban Legends. They've decided that Tim and Stephanie have officially broken up. And that Tim is now going on an adventure with an old college buddy named Bernard. Bernard came out because of Tim's courage and his, his, his attitude and everything. And what that kind of leads to is Tim is starting to understand himself and has decided that he is now bi. He then goes to Bernard. Bernard asks him out on a date. And we go to the current Tim Drake storyline that I won't lie. I read issue one and have not touched since then. Now, to briefly touch on the situation of Tim Drake coming out as bi 30 years after his creation, I'm not a fan of it. I think John being bi is perfectly fine. John had no prior relationships. There's nothing going wrong with that. I think it's a great direction to bring Superboy in because it's something new and we can explore new ideas and we can go in different directions. But I feel the problem with Tim is that we finally got him back into a place that a lot of the fans wanted, which was him back with Stephanie, which is the core of his storylines for 20 years only to have it thrown back out because of the redundancy that is Tim Drake. I don't think, and this is in my opinion, in my opinion alone, that the Tim Drake decision was done entirely because they just want to improve representation. I feel that the decision was done because of the redundancy. And the redundancy is what I feel is the core of the problem with Tim Drake. By having Damien as being Robin and Tim Drake as being Robin, you have to pick one. And regardless of there being a ton of older fans for Tim Drake back from the 20 years that he was Robin, Damien is the Robin that a lot of newer fans are aware of. That's because DC really pushed Damien to the forefront. Damien was popular because he was the troubled, problematic kid of Batman. New 52 put him as a more prominent member of the Robin family. And then as the New 52 rolled forward and DC Rebirth rolled forward, Damien took over at the Titans. Damien took over as actual Robin. And now Damien's pretty much doing a lot of what Tim Drake did. He's doing mysteries. He's figuring things out. And I feel that because Damien is intrinsically linked to Batman and the Al Ghouls, writers have an easier time figuring out stories involving him. Tim Drake, at this point, isn't officially Robin, but he is officially Robin. He's not Red Robin, but he is Red Robin. He's in charge of Young Justice, but that disbanded. He's not in charge of Teen Titans because we gave that to Damien. He's not in charge of Titans because that's Nightwing, and they're even now reaffirming Nightwing as the leader of Titans. So where does that leave Tim Drake? 
And that's the issue. He is the redundancy. You've got the I'm better than Batman version. That's Nightwing. He's the guy who's supposed to rise above Bruce. He becomes Nightwing. He's now going to become the leader of the Justice League. He's taking the Titans and leading them. He made a school. We have anti-Batman. Batman with guns. He, that he, he never changed that focus. I want revenge on Jason. I want revenge on, not Jason. Do I would Jason want revenge on himself? I want revenge on Joker. And now they've added Bane to that roster. So Jason's still anti-Batman with guns, even though he kind of ramped all that up. That's still his MO. Damien is the son of Batman and the son of the Al Ghuls and dealing with Lazarus Pits and Talia Al Ghul. He's dealing with the League of Assassins and his time with the Year of Blood. He's got all this stuff with him. And Tim's whole thing back before New 52 was, I'm Robin. I am Robin to Batman. I'm smarter than Batman. I'm the detective. And we need to have more relationships in comics. So here's my girlfriend, Stephanie. Unlike manga or a novel series or things like that, comic books swap writers. So they accept pitches that sound interesting and either will bring them clicks or views or readers or whatever. And I just feel like no one has submitted anything interesting for Tim. Because Tim is the redundancy, like I've said a few times. How does Tim stand out from the other Robins for anybody that wasn't reading Tim from 1989 to 2009? And even into, up to 2009, he was starting to get pushed out for Damien because Damien arrived, I believe it was like 2006. Like if you weren't reading from 1989 to 2004, or 2005 timeframe, the highlights, the best of Tim's years don't stand out to you. As someone who at that age would have been like 13, I wasn't reading Tim Drake. So for it's the same problem I have with Wally. I love Wally, but I'm not connected to Wally because of his 20 years of being the Flash. I'm actually connected to Wally because of his time period in the TV show, the original two seasons of Young Justice. I'm connected to Wally because it wasn't Wally, it wasn't something else. But what they've done with Wally, but they've never really done that with Tim Drake. Tim Drake's had a problem ever since Damien's introduction, because initially it was Tim versus Damien, then Damien became Robin, and Tim Drake became the redundancy, and they've proven that with 2011 all the way until now. The only time that they truly kind of redeemed him was with Detective Comics, and I really loved that run, and I felt it was a good purpose for Tim, but they threw that out. Once James Tynion moved on, no other writer wanted to tell that story. So that story was done, that's a complete story involving Tim Drake, and it's over. And since then, they haven't no, no one's known what to do with Stephanie. No one's known what to do with the team because he was on Young Justice. And now the newest writer came in and suggested, let's make Tim buy. He'll be the representation Robin. We'll do that kind of a situation. Like I said, I feel like this, is, this has come out of left field because he's in the video game. He's in the TV show this way. They're trying to find a way to make him not a redundancy. It's why I feel Duke fell out of nowhere. Because they're like, look, we're already dealing with redundancies in the Bat family. What does Duke do? I mean, the Outsiders, they put him on that. Was it the Outsiders? Yeah, he was on the Outsiders, and they kicked him off. Now it's just Black Lightning and Katana again. Where did Duke go? The Bat family in general has an issue with redundancies. Harley Quinn and Punchline? Well, Harley Quinn's kind of a hero now. Let's make Punchline! It's just an, an ongoing issue, and I, that's the problem with Tim Drake. It has nothing to do with whatever decision you want to make. I don't believe that woke agenda, blah, 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 like that. I don't believe in that whole thing. But I do think that there was an actual conscious effort to do that decision with Tim because they had nothing else for Tim. And that's what I feel the issue is. They need to figure out a good idea for Tim. And it just doesn't exist. And I don't know what they're going to do with this fixed up Donna DC timeline. Like, how are we going to handle this? Tim hasn't even shown up on Lazarus Planet yet. Where's Tim, everyone? We, 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 Nightwing is going to run the Titans as the Justice League. Red Hood is apparently in some spy thing right now. Damien is like becoming Batman. Where's Tim? Where is he? <laughs> Dan interrupted me because I just went on a rant asking where Tim is. Okay. Like I, my, my whole point was that there's Lazarus planet going on and Tim's not involved in that and that, and that he's not involved in the Batman run and that he's not involved in anything going on right now other than his solo comic book that I'm not reading. I was wrong. Which proves the point. Tim is in Chip Zdarsky's Batman run as Robin right now. He's having an amazing role, including a backup where he's teaming up with John to figure out where Batman is. The problem is, if they didn't say Tim, he wouldn't have stood out. Now that just slipped my mind because I'm loving Chip Zdarsky's Batman. And just to add to my point, they never figured out what to do with Tim. Think about this for a moment. Tim was Robin. And then for 11 years, they could not figure out where to put him because they already had a Robin. Do you know why Tim is Robin right now? 
because Damien quit. If you're following the story, Damien quit as Robin and is doing something else right now and hasn't been Robin for two years. So Tim is Robin again. <laughs> Literally the just meaning of a redundancy. They didn't do anything with him, but put him back as Robin. I think that encompasses this whole video right there for you. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please check out Manga Story and Ineligible Monster. And don't forget, we also have our podcast channel. Uh, absolutely. I'll have all those links down below. I'd love to see you be a part of those families as well. But let me know what your thoughts are down below. And do, what do you think is going on with Tim? Do you think he's a redundancy? Do you think I'm wrong? Because I know some people look at the Batman Urban Legend situation and they just go, oh, well, that's the problem with Tim. Tell me where he was for the 10 years before that. Okay, if you could tell me a solid plan with Tim up until then, maybe I'll see it your point of view, but he, he's just had nowhere. It, Detective Comics was the only good run. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell to be a part of these videos. I try to put them out every Wednesday. Next up, I'm looking deeper into the Nightwing situation because did you know that Nightwing at one point fought an evil version of himself that was revived from the dead zombie version brought by a guy named Dr. Hurt and they didn't know what to do with Nightwing so he was having head pains and then they turned him into a character named Rick Grayson? <sighs> anyway, see you next time.